So that uh, uh, brings us to the end of the concept clearance uh, activities in this meeting. Uh, the uh, next agenda item is council initiated discussion. This is uh, the time on the agenda where we um, uh, open it up for uh, uh, council members to raise any uh, questions or issues that um, they may wish to uh, ask us about or tell us about. Um, it's also the time where we do a little preview of the next council meeting and, uh, and, and give you a sense for what's coming up and what uh, agenda items you might like to uh, uh, add to the, the September meeting. So um, let me just first ask if there are any questions that are other than the September agenda or issues that people want to ask about. Um, sitting here, I must admit, a lot of the science I'm <laughs> having trouble with. But um, when we talked this morning about the amount of funds needed for just gathering this information and storing it somewhere, and I think one of the slides said it's important that funders start kicking into this pot. On the flip side, we have increasing um, requirements of um, communicating with potential human subjects and informed consent notification becoming bigger and bigger. I can tell you um, the ongoing discussion of return of research results and incidental findings is suggesting that lo and behold a long-term relationship with research participants is something that we're going to have to consider. In my mind, I'm bucketing all of this as the infrastructure of just doing research. As we're sitting here with less and less money, the amount of requirements for the business of doing research, to my mind, is an incredibly steep curve. And I'm probably not identifying all of the issues that are there. But I think at some point, just the way you know, this single institute, it, you know, it's obviously is trans NIH, but um, you know, we're having to look at these in very, very different ways. And you know, my, my lens to the IRB piece is, how can we possibly say all this research can go forward when we have no idea where those resources are coming from? So I guess uh, I'm babbling on, but that is an issue I think would be an interesting one to talk about. So I had a thought on this subject. Uh, a lot of the, I think the same issues have been coming up on the informatics side this morning. And I was just wondering if it's worth um, considering from a, a, a longer term, more strategic point of view, this might be the type of problem that is solved more efficiently, more efficiently at, at a larger scale. So, you know, many years the, ago, the, the genome centers were set up to do uh, sequencing more efficiently. And I wonder whether uh, the, the time is coming to try and tackle some of these large-scale informatics issues um, uh, along those lines. It seems to me that there could be a lot of commonality and when you talk about other institutes, uh, you know, it's perhaps the case that if you set up the infrastructure in this way, that uh, people at other institutes, uh, other projects, R01 and so on, could uh, budget appropriately and uh, make use of, of more of a center type resource. You can think of it as a, as a cloud type resource. Mark, I want to press you. I want to, I want to make sure I understand what you're saying. You're, you're, are you implying that some of these um, informatics computational database issues might should be looked at broader than NHGRI? And you mean at an NIH level, if that's what you're saying? Or did you mean something else? I'm, I meant something else. I meant that um, these there are many aspects of these the informatics issues that are all related to each other. Um, and that perhaps they could be, and you've got different DACs and individual PIs and so on, trying to solve the same issues at, at many levels of scale. And I'm just thinking that um, in some sense, as Pearl mentioned, this is a, a sort of a common in infrastructure that one can make use of. And, and so what I was suggesting was that it might be worth um, thinking of this on a, on a much larger scale within NHGRI. Ah. This perhaps could be done along the, the same um, uh, conceptual lines as uh, uh, genome centers have been thought of to, to uh, I guess, 
you know, for want of a better word, it sort of industrialized the process of uh, generating data. But instead of that, I think tackle what is becoming an even much more difficult problem, the, the process of uh, handling data of uh, not, not necessarily the, you know, the end stage sort of study specific analysis, but everything in between. How do you appropriately store it? How do you do this? Uh, how do you do the, the, uh, just the routine computation on it? At what point do you throw data away? At what point do you, all of these things seem to me perhaps may be done much more cost effectively if you put together a critical mass of people whose job it is to do that. And then that type of center could potentially become a, a resource, like, uh, like you know, Amazon provides a cloud resource. They can do it much more efficiently than any individual small group can because, because of uh, the, this efficiency of scale. So other people can plug into the Amazon cloud. Uh, even individual PIs could plug into this sort of uh, center level resource and could help fund it. And anyone in any institute uh, could uh, could make use of such a, a, a compute resource. Let's call it that. But but it's not just a stack of disks and CPUs. Uh, as we've talked about, there there has to be a, a lot more around that to get useful. Bill. So I I think Mark raises the obvious question and. And this was, in fact, the subtext of the meeting that we had last week and that we spent a day and a half discussing. And, and I think that some of the next steps that Peter was describing and talking about is exactly to get different groups of people to think um, in more detail about it. I mean, ostensibly, the meeting was about the short read archive, but it wasn't really about the short read ar archive at all. It was about how are we going to handle the, the storage and management and at some level distribution in the way you're talking about of the large amounts of data that are being generated on, you know, not just in the big projects like TCGA and thousand genomes and ENCODE, but also, I mean, it's been brought up here a couple of times, the kind of data that's now also coming out of individual individual investigator labs. So I think I think you're absolutely right and I just want to emphasize that that really was the subtext of that meeting and people are trying to think about it. The bottom line is that it's going to cost money and you know whether that money comes from the center because this is an NIH issue it's not just an NHGRI issue whether it comes from the center whether it comes from the institutes themselves wherever it comes from you know, it's kind of a zero-sum game, so something else is going to have to give, so to speak. And, and I will stress that um, the broad issue of computational biology, biology is being looked at at the NIH level, but it's not going very quickly. And 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 and, and, and there's lots of reasons for that because there's a lot of other crazy things going on. Um, but the fact of the matter is, on on multiple occasions. I have been, um, you know, told by by Francis Collins and others that when that really gets traction, they keep saying, we, and we really want to rely on your council because it's one of the most knowledgeable councils we have. For, you know, so and I do think we will get engaged. The problem is, it's 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 just been moving very slowly, and, and so in fact, I'm hardly involved yet. We do have some people on staff that are involved in some of the feeder committees and working groups that are going to eventually feed up, but. I will tell you, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not sure we can, we, maybe this almost speaks to what you're partially implying, I'm not sure we can totally wait for an NIH-wide global plan because that may be too slow in coming together. And in some ways, I think Jill is right. It was like we didn't really need an excuse to have another meeting, but the, the, the meeting that recently happened, there were lots of issues that are bubbling through it, and it was just, you know, it was just because of the most recent crisis, quote unquote, that, that made us quickly convene it. But go ahead, Mark. Well, I think. If almost by definition, if you if you want to make a global plan, it's it's going to be slow. You have to right. think about everything, and uh, I think there is the potential, perhaps, to to help that effort even by making this uh, a much more narrow NHGRI specific type of focus on dealing with the next gen sequencing data. It's something that could help inform this broader, slower discussion. It's the need is is pretty urgent, 
And it seems to me if you constitute it much more narrowly, um, it, it, it could be something that could potentially be yielding benefits on a much shorter time scale. I'm not sure it's a zero-sum game. I think that if you look at the costs of doing this uh, you know, across NHGRI and across NIH, I suspect there may well be some economies that can be realized. And, and, and I heard you say center, and then I'm sort of think, thinking, thinking of some big group to do it, but then I also hear you saying, you know, new creative ideas for how to deal with next-gen sequencing. And then I'm thinking a, almost a technology development program of smaller grants. Which of those do you mean, or do you mean a little bit of both? I, I meant uh, a center, but, you mean um, a center. but I, um, I, I don't think it precludes the other. I, I'm just thinking that um, there, there would need to be significant discussion on on uh, the the um, what such a center, how, the remit of that center, what what specifically its activities would be, what problems exactly it's going to solve. I think there's enough of those that one can it's a pretty big menu. One can choose from that uh, uh, some some things that are really actionable over the next year or two and yielding benefit quite quickly if, if one doesn't get carried away and try and make it too big and, and too amorphous. I, I think that's a really important point because, you know, there's been a lot of discussion about sort of our shortfall in informatics, our shortfall in computational biology. Those are fairly broad terms, and I think um, it, it's, it's hard for me to think about a one-size-fits-all computational center that's going to be able to effectively address this. I mean, we find even you know, clusters that are directed towards doing, you know, phenotype algorithms need to be tuned differently from clusters that are focused on doing sequence analysis. So um, there's a, a, a lot of detail that needs to be f to be uh, thought about. And so I like the idea very much of defining this much more narrowly and saying, you know, if we're really talking, when we talk about large data sets, are we really talking about sequence data? And if we are, maybe starting with a focus on sequence data is a good place to start and trying to solve that problem. And in that, there may be lessons learned that help with, you know, all the mod encode data and all the encode data and all the phenotype data that's coming down down the road. Um, but, but I think we do need, I mean, to have some real clarity when we talk about computational biology, informatics, uh, you know, about what the scope of that is, because the scope of those fields is huge. So Pearl, this, this the, the well, conversation that yeah. But, I will now talk to you about informatics. <laughs> yeah. But but it uh, it if I understood you correctly, you're sort of saying that the, the, these other um, required costs of research, which are still now being treated as an unfunded mandate, um, uh, could are, are sort of on the same trajectory, and we want to try and address them before they too come to a crisis situation. Right. I think uh, the discussion this morning, the informatics, I think, is just a great example. But I think there are many others. We were talking about the emerge, et cetera, you know, putting things in the electronic medical record. This desire for a central mechanism. That exact same discussion is going on for return of research results. And we already said it's too much money for the clinical side. We'll just think that it be for the research side where it's every week there's new data. So it's just to, to have an eye on, I think, all of the things that now go into the business of doing research and who is going to pay for it. And, you know, for each of us at an institution, how can you say you have, how can you sign off that this, in fact, is a doable project given the funds you have? We have all these competing requirements. But um, I, I'm I'm very sensitive to what uh, what Pearl has just mentioned. But it just occurs to me from some of the data you've shown us that um, this institute sequences much less than many of the other institutes. So why is this a unique? Is this a place where we want to take the leadership role, which is arguably maybe that's the way we should do it, or is this something that um, that NIH, other institutes need to really also uh, get involved in because this this research infrastructure question is not not unique. Well, I could give a lot of answers to that question. The first thing I point out is what one of the things that uh, we will be um, s struggling with, to be quite honest, and, and Pearl's pointing right at it, is uh, 
even human subjects research is becoming a bigger and bigger, even besides all the costs associated with it, just if you read our strategic plan, you sort of point the point us where we're likely heading, it's going to become a much more prominent part of what we do. And yet, I mean, I say that, and yet, you know, we're, we're a teeny, 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 teeny little fraction of human subjects research funded by NIH. In fact, we're probably, those curves are probably could barely even see us graphed. Probably can't, it's so low. So certainly not, the only difference is in any of the nuances brought on by genomics research, which I don't know how significant we think that is contributing to the larger expense uh, that are going to have to be dealing with. Um, the, the, with respect to your point directly, Jeff, if thinking about sequence data, you know, if, if, if we don't attempt to lead, I mean, I mean, sort of, you know, we're still leading in sequencing technology and we still have the best funded groups doing sequence. So I still think it's probably the expectation is that we will provide, you know, a good part of the intellectual leadership. Problem is, is we have to know what to do and we have to have enough resources to make a difference. And so we will do that best we can and we will participate heavily in um, uh, any NIH-wide discussions. But I don't, I don't think we can say somebody else has to lead. I, I think that's just not tenable. I think it's way too much expected that we will be heavily at the front of the line with a lot of voice and a small wallet, but yeah. <laughs> well, I, I think that same model, uh, it, just judging from what's going on at my institution, is playing out all over the place because uh, since we're generating uh, large-scale sequencing data, we're, we're viewed as a group that should take the lead in computational uh, biology, computer, we're supposed to know about the cloud, all that kind of stuff. And I mean, the, the same kinds of questions that were brought up earlier in the day come, come to us just simply because we're in genetics, which doesn't necessarily make sense. <laughs> Other topics? Well, I, th I mean, obviously, we need to follow up. Yep. Um, and For the September agenda, is that what you're asking about? Oh, no, I think. I, I was went... asking in, in general. I'll go in. I can bring up the uh, September just agenda whenever you're ready. Sounds like you're ready. So, <clears throat> um, as far as I can tell, or we can tell, the September Council meeting is going to be very heavily uh, uh, devoted to reviewing grants, grant applications. We have uh, several major RFAs uh, that are being addressed. Um, the four sequencing RFAs, will be, the applications will be coming to Council. Um, Eric m earlier mentioned the uh, the production for the protein capture common fund uh, um, project. Uh, we have uh, ret um, two RFAs on the street now for about addressing the issue of return of results um, in studies. Those will be um, uh, coming to September Council. And then there is a set of something like 10 uh, resource applications, databases, and other kinds of resources. Um, which will have to be reviewed at September Council as well. So it seems to me like the the um, the, the bulk of the activity at September uh, will be on grant-related closed session items. So to me, it's looking like the open session at um, at in September will be rel very minimal, maybe even just the director's report, unless there are. Um, other topics that uh, that are, are screaming for attention, and then we'll just go in and have as long a closed session as possible. Um, and probably, I think we'll still be able to do it uh, if we devote most of Monday and much of Tuesday uh, to to closed session. So, if that's agreeable, um, if there aren't any pressing scientific issues you want to hear about uh, in uh, as open session presentations. I think we could probably not do project updates, not necessarily do meeting reports and things like that. I don't know if we'll have any concept clearances. If we, if there are, we'll have to do those in open session. But that's what uh, September Council looks like to me right now. Any comments? 
inevitably a lot could happen in four months, and there might we might have to add things to open. I mean, we just so I, it, it'll be very surprising to me if the only thing in open session is director's report, but we'll see. Okay. So if not, if that's um, there aren't any other issues to bring up, then I have to get back to the agenda, the live agenda. There are uh, just. Uh, remaining to call to your attention some announcements and item of items of interest which are listed on the open session agenda there's a report to council from the American College of Medical Genetics uh, there's the quarterly report from the National Science Society of Genetic Counselors which I'll call to your attention I'll also mention that uh, we received too late to uh, to put on the agenda but there is a an update for council report to council from the genetic alliance which um, we didn't hand out because it wasn't uh, available um, completely publicly to uh, put people who would be looking watching the video cast there are copies outside for any council members who are interested and we probably will go ahead and amend the uh, the open session agenda to put that on as well um, any other items of interest that anyone wants to, to mention? If not, uh, it's time for the conflict of interest statement, and then we will uh, uh, end the open session. So um, in anticipation of what's going to happen in, in closed session, uh, we have to read the, uh, the following, make it clear to you the following statement about conflict of interest. You must leave the meeting room when applicants submitted by your own organization are being individually discussed. In the case of state higher education or other systems with multiple campuses geographically separated, own organization is intended to mean the entire system, except where determination has been made that the components are separate organizations for purposes of conflict of interest. You should avoid situations that could give rise to charges of conflict of interest, whether real or apparent. For example, you should not participate in deliberations and actions on any application from or involving a recent student, a recent teacher, a professional collaborator with whom you've worked closely, a close personal friend, or a scientist with whom you have had longstanding scientific or personal differences. The NHGRI staff will determine the appropriate action based on the recency frequency and strength of such associations or interest, either positive or negative, and will instruct you of accordingly. Please sign the conflict of interest and disposal of confidential materials forms which have been provided to you. They'll be collected at the end of the meeting. And with that, I think we've reached the end of the open session. You want to slam your gavel? Okay. Sure. Why don't, why don't you wait till we actually reconvene in closed session? So should do 15 minute break.